Come on in, Stash. Are you in? Oh, Stash is here, buddy. <laughs> the Stash is back. The Stash is here this afternoon. Oh. Guys, as you sign on tonight, everybody knows the kind of routine that we do. Make sure you hit that 25K Crappie Connection. Got a great show lined up. Very inter interesting spring conditions unfolding everywhere. And I'm sure everybody's kind of experienced it this week. And we want to kind of dig into this post cold front conditions, cold front conditions, and how different people adjust to them. And a lot of, I really want to stress to you guys, if you got questions about this time of year, hit us up with it. And I can promise you between everybody we got online tonight watching us, we will get you some answers. Got a string of folks signing in right now as I see. I see Josh, Travis, Tom, Kathy. I'm not sure we're going to miss some folks. Andrew, Travis. Nathan, Colby. John Mayo. Kevin. You seen John? Oh, yeah. I've seen He's John yet. Speaking of, I've seen, I I seen old John Mayo has been doing a little wade fishing. Uh-huh. That I need might need to go check that out. How fun would that be? He's whacking things on the dang. Uh, <laughs> that would be fun. That'd be a blast. Guys, let's hear some today's bike fish reports. Post those up there as we get going, too. We're going to let a few more people come in. I think I see about 65 right now between YouTube and Facebook. Definitely uh, thank everybody for joining the Crappie Connection Today's Bike Show brought to you by Bobby Garland Bates. Special appreciate to everybody up there for supporting the stash and I to do yes. this show every Tuesday night. It's a great privilege and honor to get to talk to everybody and enjoy the love that I know Dustin has for crappie fishing, just like I have. I absolutely love my job and very blessed to do what I get to do every day. And absolutely. thank you for everybody, for everything y'all do on y'all's end to help support today's bite and the crappie connection. For Another sure. really cool thing is we're at 49,250 ish followers about 750 folks away from hitting that 50k i cannot wait to hit that 50k uh it's just been a kind of a goal that i have in mind and with you guys help we can actually obtain it pretty easily also on youtube we're about 11,500 subscribers great deal like i said if you haven't hit that follow button on facebook make sure you do it and if you're watching from youtube We'd love for you to actually hit that subscribe button too. Make sure you turn in notifications on. Got a lot of good videos coming out. A lot of great podcasts. Um, matter of fact, tomorrow's podcast will have Dustin and I talking with Torch Tyndall about long line trolling. And we kind of dig into it when we're up at Grizzly Jig Show and uh, talked about the benefits of using long line trolling. And a lot of the questions that I got um, asked was how do you combat wind in the springtime and even dustin and i were talking about windy conditions we both oh, man. <laughs> been experiencing i believe it will take a toll on you at day after day at 25 30 mile per hour it just wears you plumb out i was just telling him uh, i told him in, a, in another 10 years i'm gonna look like an old bootlegger man if i don't <laughs> take care of myself you know water temperature from us uh, and we'll talk a little bit even about water temperature in the last week, you know, I've seen a lot of 62, 63 water all around uh, Ross Barnett and went fishing Saturday and actually went back out yesterday on a guide trip and today as well. And then dropped it down to 59 degrees. So we had a little bit of cool down. Yeah, we did. Yesterday too. was, seemed to me, but one of the coldest days I have fished in a long time. And I don't know if it was just because kind of got used to feeling warm yeah. again and, uh, Yesterday, it seemed like it blew 400 miles an hour and uh, wind chill of nat negative 50, but it was that really was cold, <laughs> but we survived, and uh, I'm going to dig in my today's bite, but I'm going to let the stash go first, because I've been talking a lot. Okay, stash will go first. Um, no, we, we had the same kind of uh, weather you're talking about. This morning was brutal cold, so I pushed the weather, or pushed the weather, pushed my trip back. I didn't have two trips today. I just had one big trip of four people. So I pushed it back. I asked them if they were good to go at 10 o'clock instead of, you know, 738 because it was cold. So we had a southwest wind at probably 20 mile per hour first thing in the morning, and it was mm -hmm. like 28 to 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I knew it was cold because I went out to water the dogs this morning. The dog bowl was frozen. So I'm like, oh, my gosh. 
throws you way off. So uh, normally what's been happening is first thing in the morning, the fish are super lethargic. You can see tons of crappie, but we're dropping on them and they just don't want to move or do anything. So I pushed it back, let the sun come up a little bit and make for not as cold of day. So uh, we went out. The roughest part right now is the boat ride. You know, I've got places to hide from the wind, but getting there is brutal. So get we, there. Get there, we get there, get to our first spot. And I've been chasing Roman fish anywhere from eight to 15 foot deep, uh, just suspended a little bit uh, off the channel, a little bit everywhere, flats in the middle of coves, mouth of coves, kind of just staging up our water temperatures anywhere from 55 to 58 degrees. But today was about 56. Like I said, it's been chilly. Um, I seen it up to 60 last week though. So we got that cold front and it moved everything. Um, so the first hour, I mean, I know even my clients were sweating because the fish were just not, you know how it is. You're like, oh, oh, yeah. please don't do me like this crap. It was one out of five fish were biting. The clients were keeping track. So <laughs> one, one to five or five to one ratio. Every, every, every five fish you get one to bite. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I cranked the trolling motor a little higher than normal had my brakes rolling and was just putting on fish after fish. Usually I like to just creep through, pick your fish off. And then after the first hour, it was like, I made them, I made a move not too far. And it was like a light switch. I mean, them fish, yep. every fish we dropped on was biting and you just couldn't do no wrong. You got it in the area. They're coming up. And of course, clients getting better at learning what they're seeing. First time seeing live scope and man, it did not take so long. In four hours, we had 60 good fish. All, everybody mm -hmm. limited out and we put a smoke on them so it, it was good we had a blast and uh bait of the week it's kind of funny brad's got one of the same baits so i'm going to switch it up um i'd say my number one bait would be the bleeding shad I, i've been using bleeding shad a lot um two trips ago i've been i've been fishing really hard in a lot of trips um two trips ago i had one of the roughest goes at getting finicky fish to bite and I bet I went through 12 different Bobby Garland baits mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to get them by. And it's so funny. I had a guy that would come up when it was his turn. We're sniping singles out. And he would say, every time I tie a new one on, they bite. And I'm not kidding you. I would oh, tie on a new, dude, I'd tie on a new jig, first drop, bang. And I'm like, oh, yeah. We, we got something. <laughs> yeah, we got something. Next fish, next fish, go, go. I'd switch baits, first fish, bam. So I went to tying so many baits. So it's just day by day goes. It's, it's always different. Um, I mean, I went through the whole arsenal the other day, though. You would, you would have been proud, Brad. The whole boat, I pulled all my stuff out. <laughs> I love it. I didn't have, hey, didn't have any minnows in the boat, so I was going through all of it, buddy. And uh, the itty bit white and chartreuse was was the number. I mean, I say that I went through no joke, probably twelve different baits, but itty bit white and chartreuse was probably the ticket to squeeze the limits off for the rest mm -hmm. of the trip. Let me ask you this question, Carolina Crappie. He's asking, do you focus on water temperature, length of days? Or anything specific, I can't say that very well, to start the shallow water search. You know, uh, for that question right there, I'm going to actually start on some kind of ledge. And it's going to be from deep water to shallow water. But I'm going to follow that ledge on back, uh, you know, into the shallow spawning areas. And if I don't notice anything, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go from there and work myself yeah. deep. Uh, typically for me, and, you know, Matt Rogers last week kind of, said that his way is starting the back and working itself way out and kind of mine for this pre-spawn pattern is kind of the opposite and it's just i mean he's a great fisherman for sure so i can listen to him as well but yeah. i kind of start in the mouth and work my way back and from deep to shallow and yeah. it's just where i have more confidence at i always feel like there's going to be some fish deep um regardless if it's pre-spawn spawn post-spawn post i always feel like there's going to be some fish deep staged out so i'm gonna start out in a deeper section and work my way back into the shallows um my today's biting i won't go back all the way to end of last week i fished every day last week including saturday but you know we had this big cold front come in on us and it kind of changed up things we had a lot of rain friday night and um i went out saturday morning and actually did some got to fish by myself for a little while right sunny day and uh i said man they've got to be wanting a, a bright color bait and you know some kind of glitter and oh man I you know, know I, and i did catch a few fish but they are still wasn't getting the reaction that i was really looking for they would nose it up and come up and some of them would swim down and that keeps telling my mindset that i haven't got it all the way keyed in yet 
And I picked up a color and I'm like, you know, why not? Let's give it a shot. And Dustin kind of alluded to it a second ago, but it's not really a color that I would, it's not really a pretty color. You know oh, what I mean? It, it's it, pretty. It's I don't a bad think it's, color. it's not really that pretty of a color. Bad but boy. It's a new color that a lot of guys that got the samples is probably tried it as well. And you, if you got some, haven't tried it, you need to. And it's the tadpole color. And I'm going to put it up there. And it's kind of a brown silver. Um, as soon as I one. drop that bait on there, look at that. that. Color right there. <laughs> First fish that's seen it, all of a sudden, it turned around and whacked it. I mean, it come two or three feet away and just smoked it. And I'm like, all right, I got something going now. And so I've been kind of going with the flow and, and stick it to the darker colors. Sandfly has been another good color the last two days, which is a, a goldish color with oh, yeah. some gold flake in it. Muddy water. You know, I think they've just been wanting a little bit darker baits the last couple of days for me anyway. Kind of where I keyed in at was I knew a cold front come in. So I caught them Saturday in really about 10 foot to about 14 foot of water. So yesterday morning, wind blowing, like I said, like crazy. Started kind of there and, and picked up pretty quick. I wasn't seeing the number of fish that I saw Saturday before this cold front blew in. So I just kind of staged myself out and worked myself back out deeper. And sure enough, hit that 12 foot slope that goes down to really 25 foot of water. And there they are. You know, they done moved about three, 400 yards to where they were two days earlier. Yeah. Just because they had staged up and got a little closer to spawning, cold front come in, they moved back out a little bit. The bite has been just as good. And and, and a lot of times you'll hear people say that, you know, cold front come, come in and completely shut down the fish. And really, it hasn't for our fish. And, wow. and another thing that I really noticed yesterday, like I said, it was miserably cold, really. But we stuck with it and had a really good day with all the conditions. Um, we've seen a couple of times that the fish were going up and attacking balls of shad and I'm like, Oh man, they're feeding. We just oh, got to yeah. get the bait to them. Yeah. And sure enough, you know, like I said, we stuck with it and kept our mind down and kept focused on the, on the uh, task at hand. Uh, a, a couple of the different things that I had to do to adjust to the, the wind and, and the, the waves. Cause you go into a big body of water like Grand Lake and Ross right. Barnett and Toledo Bend and right. numerous Grenada, Sardis, and the list goes on and on. But I had to upsize the weight above above my jig some. Typically, I like using a half ounce, a three eighths, and sometimes even a quarter ounce, depending on how deep they are above my jigs. How strong this wind was blowing yesterday and the waves was pushing and we were having to chase these fish down. I upsized my weight all the way to three quarter ounce and even went to a larger jig head. A lot of times I like using a 16th or a, a 124th, you know, smaller size jig head, but just because it was so windy, so wavy, I upsized my jig heads and also the weight up above the jig. And you say, well, <clears throat> you know, the, the great thing about live sonar is a lot of times, not only you can feel the bite, but you'll see the bites mainly. So we had to upsize the jig heads and the weight to actually bring the baits to them. But as soon as they see them, these fish would turn up and they would smoke them. They would oh, just yeah. turn around and attack them. And we're sitting there holding the pole. You know, the, the Robert Lee's the gentleman that fished with me yesterday. I could see him sitting there shivering. I mean, literally shivering. It was so cold. But and as soon as the fish would see them, they would turn around and smoke them. We just had to adjust by actually going a little bit deeper where I found two days beforehand. I moved back out three or 400 yards out of that creek map a little bit further out in the main lake. And sure enough, there they are. Uh, so hopefully that kind of tells you my today's bite anyway. Today we had a phenomenal day. Uh, on my God service page, you'll see four of the ones that we're holding, but I had a table full of them like that. Um, some great folks from Oklahoma. Ooh, what are you taking my folks out for? What in the world? Hey, come hey, on I, down. Need I just need to do better, don't I? <laughs> <clears throat> we had a great day with them. Really enjoyed it. And we're going to do round two tomorrow. So stay tuned on today's bike tomorrow. And I'm going to have some more caught. I'm, I'm 
feel pretty hey, confident I'm, looking. I'm seeing a few today spike coming in but guys you're weak tonight i'm gonna need more today oh. spike coming in what everybody's uh fishing report i gotta hear y'all's fishing report and see what's kind of going around around on these parts i seen gary rose got a he said catching smells turn black on gibson but fish are still out off the bank gary that's about the same here the males are starting to turn but not normally like they do yet i, I mean when they turn start turning black black i really you know you know it's getting close it's they're not turning near as black like brad sent me a picture a few fish he caught and they're turning black like they're they're yeah. starting to tuxedo up pretty good but still like when when ours get black i mean it's almost like a lot of people think they're black crappie so they yeah. ain't there yet so it makes me know that they're not quite going just yet but they're getting close i caught my first crappie this past saturday that was actually dark black colored yeah when i brought him out of the water that was the first one i've actually caught that had colored up before throwing in a live well a lot of times right now i'll throw them a live well and they'll turn they color. they'll color yeah. up but that was the first one that i actually had uh caught coming out of the water that was darkened up and you know these fish right now and i can i, I kind of feel like they're still in a, a strong pre-spawn pattern just for the simple fact they're not really guarding these stumps and these brush piles and where they're wanting to spawn yet you'll see them sitting there and as soon as the boat gets anywhere near them they leave them but as, as the spawn progresses those fish so stay far. there and they're going to protect where they're at yeah. but see they were they were doing that's that how you kind of know the spawn oh, really? they were doing that strong. yeah yeah there was males and it's funny me and josh would be fishing and we're like there's a male on this i mean it would be just sitting on the top and even shallow or deeper i say deeper four foot or one foot deep um you could even spook that fish and he'd circle back and go back on the stump and you'd end up catching him and it'd be a male sitting there and he would he would be colored up straight off the stump still have color on him uh so i i imagine he was they were garden eggs and we did that a few times so i figured it was going on there at grenada mm -hmm. We got Tim Smith. He said he caught his uh, fish on Ross Barn that Saturday in eight to twelve foot of water on Cajun Cricket, bluegrass, mayflies. Most fish were Cajun roaming, Cricket absolutely. is a great color right now, and so is the mayfly baits. Um, we're, I've seen a few mayflies around right now, which is absolutely crazy. But I have seen um, mayflies. Here we go. We got Mr. Crawford on here. He says, uh, I'm still not finding fish in 10 to 15 foot of water, working real hard to catch a limit, but they are 25 to 30 foot deep on the bottom. Okay. So what I'm thinking is you're, you're, I'm more on the north end of the lake, so I'm in shallower fish. The water's a lot warmer. You're on the south, more south end of the lake, so it's going to be uh, colder. They're going to be deeper, 25 to 30 foot. It sounds about right. Uh, those fish are probably real aggressive down there, 25, 30 foot. I like fishing for them down there. And when I say 10 to 15 foot, they're 10 to 15 foot deep, but they're still 25 to 30 foot of water. They're not, they're not in the uh, shallow water like that yet. Kevin's asking, he says, on a 93 SV unit, is there any way to get one foot increments on the forward range for like 20 or 30 foot out? His is set at two, two foot increments. And my question would be for you, Kevin, would be, how deep is the range setting that can go into that whole equation as well um, for me i typically fish 18 foot and fixed on my depth so and 20 foot out is kind of my my fishing guidelines to say i don't like to bring it any closer than 20 and if any way possible i like catching them 18 foot and shallow yeah so you. mine kind of blocks in that one foot increment so i really don't even have a good answer for you maybe somebody else oh jerry hancock's in the house brother thanks uh -huh. for, thanks for hopping on here and commenting. he got he said he's starting to catch some post spawn fish mm -hmm. on lake fork um out of 70 today 12 to 15 were post spawn wow that's crazy so yeah they're doing it going on in texas i imagine what's your water temperature jerry where you're fishing I hear there's a lot of shallow bites, but there's real, real deep bites there too. And I think one of the things that kind of holds Barnett back a lot of times is the current that kind of flows through the lake. And we've had a, a lot of current. Um, these storms of systems will move in and they'll drop the lake down two foot just to prepare for a lot of water. And then all of a sudden, after the water gets through the system, they'll raise it back up. So we've been having a lot of current shut on and off 
yesterday, even in that wind that we had, I noticed a current on the main lake. So it was kind of like wind push, roller, a wave push, and a current push. So it was really, yeah. <laughs> it was a struggle. Zach Lawmaster, he asked me if I was on Grand Lake last week. Yes, Zach, I was. I actually fished Grand Lake, heck, I think probably every day last week. I was out there probably all day too. So yeah, you probably seen me somewhere. Okay, I'll make sure. You guys hit us up with these questions as you come through here. And if you haven't done yet, go ahead and hit that thumbs like or the like button. And also, I want to welcome all the new subscribers, all the new followers on both platforms. If you're a new subscriber and follower or follower, Make sure you let us know where you're from, where your home lake at. And I can just about promise you, we got some guys in the area that could probably help you out with some fishing reports. So let us let us know where you're from and maybe even kind of network. And that's the great thing about what we're trying to do here is bring you guys together. You'll meet some buddies from crop fishing that lasts for forever. So if you're a new time subscriber, follower, hit us up with a comment on where you're from and what lake you're at. Sure. Hey, there's Dustin Shields. Dustin, I've seen you've been whooping them up. Grenada too, buddy. Uh, hashtag dust dash, hashtag baby stash. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, Danny's asking about the Grenada Gold. Any suggestions? Uh, Lurinette is out. What color uh, or what profile are you looking for, Danny? And I'll try to get you an answer with that. You can PM me on Crappie Connection and I'll see what I can find out. I'll say I would suggest looking at Grizzly Jig. They carry a lot of the, the Bobby Garland colors as well year round. Yeah. I know what they are probably low on is the uh, Pecan <laughs> Creek. <laughs> if they if they probably don't have any of those left. You know, Pecan Creek probably would have been great. And I just I, I didn't I never put it on. Um but I'm sure they would have they they would have ate it up as well, just being that darker color. Mm. Uh, Zach Lawson, Lawmaster, this is a place on Grand Lake. He said, uh, been quite a few people in Duck Creek for sure. Absolutely, Zach. The back of Duck Creek is fire right now. I've actually, I've fished quite a bit there. Um, that's where I was going to ask uh, Richard Crawford where you're fishing and see if you were mid-lake like that, if you were further, further south or north. But the back of Duck Creek is really some great fishing right now. For Ron Working man, Duck. got a, a weekend warrior report. When has been tough in North Mississippi, if you can stay on them, you can catch them. Catch a few females in five foot, but still seeing a lot of them in eight to ten foot of water. I know working man fishes sardis, so I'm going to just guesstimate that's probably a sardis report. Um, yes, crappie fest at Lake Fork. Uh, I think it's there's big payouts for big fish. Jerry, you're going to have, have to explain that more. I know there's like a big tournament that goes on. It's a big deal at Lake Fork. I've seen a lot of people posting about it, but I'm not real aware of the details on it. I just, I think it's a big fish tournament only or something like that. Maybe you know more, Brad, on it. But yeah, Lake Fork is something this weekend that gives kind of everybody a chance. I know it's a big deal. A lot of people will be coming to it. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's more of a just good time for folks. I know a lot, like I said, a lot of people, a lot of good fishermen, a lot of just weekenders will be fishing this kind of tournament. I'm trying to think who fished with me um, last week. They had fished with Jerry as well. And uh, I'm trying to remember the, the client's name that fished with me. But they actually said a lot of good things about you, Mr. Hancock. Oh, there you go. Brad Edgar's got a question. It says, part of my question is blocked. Let's see what it says. All right. If you know a lake, like your home lake, do you side image or scan water for fish before you start each day? Or do you start where you have caught fish before and work through your known spots? Mm. Right deal. You know, <clears throat> Brad, for me, first of all, we'll look at the wind forecast. And I'm going to try to pick an area as calm as possible. And then the next thing I'm going to kind of look at is if there's going to be any kind of current situation that it can affect the fish as well. So that's the first two things that I'm going to look at. Um, you know, the very fortunate part of being a guide, I kind of pick up from my previous day and let off the same pattern that I, I fished the day before. But beforehand, if I'm going to say a new lake, I would side scan some. And what I mean 
and down image. I'll, if I'm going to side scan, I'm going to run down imaging at the same time. That way I can see exactly how deep the fish are, if they're you know actually on the structure that I'm seeing on my side scan unit. And also, like you know I'm probably going to preach, is what the shad ball is doing. Today and even yesterday, uh, I noticed a lot of the shad balls were tightly schooled up. And I knew without even seeing them, but I saw them, like I said before, a lot of the fish come up and actually bust through the shad ball. So I knew that was an active area, but I'm going to look for areas on my side scan and down image and that have the shad balls tightly grouped. And then I want to kind of pick out, all right, I see fish on structure. I mark some in 14 foot of water and I'm going to just try to replicate it in different areas and, and really just keep putting a little another piece of the puzzle together and building it more and more. Um, but like I said, the first two things that I'm always going to consider is wind and current. And I think both of them play a large pro role for myself where I get the fish at. And, uh, you know, when I fish like Washington all the time, I didn't have to worry about current, but I always had to worry about wind. Dust ash? Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to, it's funny that, that this is a good question. And it's funny because even today, this morning, I'm rolling into these coves or pockets, if you will. And I'm using my down imaging because I've kind of taught myself what I'm looking for on Roman fish. So if there's a lot of activity going on in my down imaging, I know they're there. If it's completely empty when I'm trolling in there, I'll turn the boat out. And I've done it a million times. A lot of people with me would attest. I'll roll in there and watch my down imaging. And I'll say, no, they ain't here today. Or they ain't here like they're supposed to be. They're on the bottom or whatever. They ain't pulled up yet. And I'll bounce and then go to a place that I see a lot of fish pulled up. I mean, whether it be white bass, shad, crappie, I know that there's crappie mixed in those. So I'm throwing the trolling motor down. I'm going to start sniping them because that's what we're doing right now. So, yeah, even this morning, I, I went to the first cove. It didn't look as good. I trolled about 50 to 100 yards in it. And then I turned around and got out. And then I pulled the next one. I said, here they are. And they're like, what do you mean? What do you mean they're in here? What do, how do you know? And I was just showing them the dots where the crappie are setting up above the shad. I'm like, these are crappie. And those, that's what we're looking for. But, yeah, I just I use my down imaging a lot to roll in there and just see what activity I'm doing. And then I'll throw the live scope down and, and check things out. But a lot of times, Brad and I both, I guarantee you, we have our spots, we have our bread and butter that we're going to go check first and without down imaging, without side imaging, that we know they should be there. Then if they're not, then we'll probably start using it a lot more, I'm sure. Yeah, another thing that I noticed even last week, and I fished last week areas out of the current and also the wind, the same formula that I start every day with. But uh, last week, I found a little area that was tucked out of the river channel in the bend, and it was more or less a current area, and it really pushed these fish on the edge of this river channel. Uh, and I think a lot of, and it's a, a well-known area of, of Ross Barnett, it's called the S-curve, and, and it always puts fish there if it's current, seems like. And along, I hadn't fished a welfare. I know a lot of people say that's, <laughs> they always comment about the welfare hole, but I haven't fished a welfare hole in about two or three weeks. I'm sure it would have been great. I've seen some pictures of some guys that were whacking them up there, but I just haven't had to go that far up. Yeah. Um, okay, so Lake Fork is a one-fish tournament. Top 20 places get paid, and then they have exact weight places. So that's that's hmm. uh, that's what that tournament is. So that's why you get – a lot of people can get paid on, on just one fish. So a lot of people have a chance. That's one fun. fish – oh, yeah, that's a fun tournament because mm -hmm. one fish – Heck, you get lucky. You could do that without a live scope. You don't need a live scope to, to win that one at all. Dip them trees out there at Fork, you might catch that one fish. You never know. <laughs> Carlos, bring big hooks to Grenada. Hey, Carlos, mind your own business, brother. <laughs> bring everything big to Grenada, I think. Yeah. He's laughing at me. I use the dang 24th ounce hook out there. <laughs> Guys, we're going to do a special welcome. We've got Floyd. He's a new subscriber from southwest Missouri, about 12 miles from some lake. I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Palm de Terre. Nice to meet you, buddy. He Palm, Palm de Terre ain't very far from me at all. I mean, oh, really? I think that's what he's uh, talking about. Yeah, Palm de Terre. And, uh, yeah, Matthew Rogers fishes it a lot. He catches a lot of bass and stuff out of there. It's a good crappie lake. A lot of numbers of of crappie in that lake so welcome floyd 
Marty's got a question. He said, what's the deal when he approaches a crappie, I'm assuming a crappie, and they dive into the mud? Still caught a few out of the mud, but just wondering why these crappie do that. Number one, they're just flat out spooky. Uh, and I've experienced that a lot here lately. But a lot of times, if you just stay right there with them, they'll kind of peel back up. And they're not going to peel all the way to the surface or anything. But a lot of times, they'll peel up a foot or two right off the bottom. And then you can catch them. Yeah. It's hard if they're not wanting to come off the bottom to get them up. At least it is for me. But if they ever start pulling back up, I seem like if I can get the bait in front of them at that point, they'll they'll smoke it. But I think a lot of times these fish are just getting more than boat shy almost. I mean, that's the only thing I know how to say it around here. Yeah, this morning it was that at Grand. And I, I haven't really witnessed that at Grand Lake. You know how I like to get up on top of them. Yeah, all these fish. We had to go to a longer rod. We were using an eleven foot Huckabee rod, and it wasn't cutting it. We, if you got within ten, twelve foot, they would just start pushing out. So we had to go to the thirteen footer. And uh, oh my, bless your heart. Yeah, we used the trident and ended up whooping on them. But I'll tell you, them fish spooking gets you stressed out when you're in the boat with clients trying to get on fishing. You know they're there, then and, and they keep pushing. That kills me. I can't stand that. That's that's why. Uh, Grenada would take a toll on a guide. I'll tell you that, Carlos. I mean, <laughs> well, you know, Barnes has been about the same. These fish have really? been really on the move. Uh, I've been using the uh, 18-foot black diamond by being in mm. for about two weeks straight now. And, oh, and, and clients hold the pole. I mean, you know, I'm going to help them steer it a little bit and all that, but they're holding the pole. But a lot of times, if a heavy pole or uh, these long poles, people are not going to hold them out like you would and try to yeah. reach them down. That's They're right. going to hold them back next to them and just kind of steer them like a, like a machine gun almost. But <laughs> um, these fish go down in the mud and, and just evade boats. And a lot of times I think it's a boat slap. And also another thing I try to pay attention to is also the shadows, you know, the shadow from my boat uh, this morning time, the lady was like, uh, we're looking at the screen and I'm if possible I'm always going to start out and run into the sun yeah that way I know my shadow of the boat is being cast behind me not in front of me so cool. and believe it or not these fish I see a big shadow all of a sudden pull over top of them and oh. they're going to split so that may be some of the, even the issues there Marty hopefully yeah. we answer some of those for you but yeah. look for boat shadow boat slap and flat out these crappie are just spooky <laughs> Stephen Sullivan said 13 footer, really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree. Them long ones, too. That's funny. Yeah, if you're using 18 footer, that's that's reaching out there. The, I mean, I already get crazy looks from clients for using the 13 footer. <laughs> but boat control is key on them spooky fish, too. You know, just being able to chase those fish because, I mean, Carlos, you, you would um, agree to this, too. Just because those fish are running does not mean they're not going to bite. They yeah. just are, are running because they feel something they just don't like. But when you still put a bait right in front of them, they're going to turn up and eat it. So that's yeah, what these, these fish are just on the move as well, especially yeah. like oh, Grenada. You know, they're yeah, just I, there. you're talking about them feeding on shad. Even today, there's some that are when they're walking. I always say walking, but when they're walking with their head up and they're gliding with their tail, like, you know, them fish are going to eat. But you got to catch them like you got to catch up to them because they're just cruising, looking for bait. And you can tell when crappie are looking for something to come in front of them. They'll come up, bust some shad and be moving you know if you put a bait in front of that fish it's a hundred percent chance that fish gonna bite those are ones you like and uh, dustin shields asked does my stash cast a shadow on them it actually <laughs> it actually does dude it does. So that shadow that it cast on them uh actually brings them up a little shallower it gets a little aggressive more of aggressive bite but yeah that might be my favorite comment of the week i mean i'll be honest i like that one that's, that's a pretty good one it That's going to be my favorite it? comment of the week. That's funny. I got Adam. He's asking. He said, well, I guess in the last case, he's telling the today's bite fish report. Last week on Lake Bartley, kids were on spring break. My 11-year-old daughter, Bess, was a 265. Holy smokes. I bet that she is. is. We'd love to see a picture of that. Yeah, Congratulations awesome. to your daughter. That is awesome. Appreciate you bringing all the kids into the outdoors like we get That's to do. Big old fish now. This coming Saturday, too, I'll be at Bass Pro Shops in Pearl, Mississippi, uh, helping out with a kids' rodeo down there. So if you got some kids and you live around the Barnett or the central Mississippi area, or if you're in the neighborhood, stop by and see me. I think I'll be there from like 11 to 3. 
So I'd love to, I love chatting crappie as if you guys haven't noticed yet. <laughs> Don't, I don't think I'm way behind you still. Oh, you definitely are. Uh, Jeff, mm, Jeff says the boats are still in the creeks. I don't know if they are fishing or catching after this cold snap. Main Lake males have slowed down a little and suspended females have went to the bottom. That sounds like a typical March cold front right there. <laughs> Sucks the life out of crappie just for a little bit, but it'll it'll warm back up for sure. Things will things will heat back up. Mr. Charles, yeah. Uh, Charles, last week I did have some guys from Indiana. We had a blast. We fished last um wednesday thursday and friday friday we actually had to cancel the trip because we had so many thunderstorms projected and everything else so we had to cancel uh friday but uh i had a client catch their personal best last week and i actually tagged it and i want to say that tag number was well, let me see if I find the tag number. but we actually tagged it it's still swimming on the barnet so personal best crappie uh tag with a crappie forever tag I'll get you that tag number if you can hang tight. But, uh, hey, Sean. Awesome time. Hello from Texoma. Sean, appreciate you commenting and checking in today, buddy. Sean Stovall. I'm hoping I got that right name. Uh, Chandler, come on in. I appreciate you coming tonight, man. Uh, Don, he's asking, what's a, place, a good place to stay at Miller's Ferry? Looks like you can fish there and not affected by wind too much like Grenada. I have never been there. I've heard a lot of good things about that uh, lake over in Alabama. Um, it's on my hit list. It's on my bucket list, crappie lakes. And I've got quite a few. Lake Fork, Jerry Hancock, you know, bro, put me up one day. Um, lake <laughs> oh, Fork's man. another one on my, my hit list. It's on fire right now, for sure. Uh, Bo Donaldson had 60 keepers Saturday rigging in 30 foot of water. Fish were suspended 15 foot down on channel lessons. Bo. That's a good name, buddy. That's what I'm naming my boy. <laughs> That's uh, what lake was he fishing, though? What was he rigging? On what lake did he get 60 keepers? I'm guessing Eagle Lake, if I had to guess. <laughs> I would guess uh, Eagle see. Lake's still been good. I, there's no doubt about it. I've heard some good reports for Eagle Lake. Joby Bradshaw, what's going on, buddy? I appreciate you hopping on. We've got 291. Like I said, uh, let's see if you haven't hit that like button. Haven't hit that thumbs up. Looks like those babies up for us real quick. 153 so far. So we're doing good. Appreciate everybody's help with that. I got Hummer. He's got Grenada Lake. Been moving up from six to eight foot of water last week. Now four foot of water. Black and chartreuse and Cajun cricket has been the colors of choice. Tuscaloosa schools just off the bottom in 30 to 40 foot of water. Silver, clear, and light blue have been his colors. Awesome. Oh, man. That's a good fishing report there now. I'm telling you, Cajun cricket is what I'm tying on tomorrow. I don't know why I missed out on a Cajun cricket bite. I know it'll be fire. Where's my color at? What do you need to put on? I know. Let me tell fire. you what color you need to put on. <laughs> First thing in the morning, I need to put on a tadpole. I need to put tadpole. But what else? Oh, not a mud what? dog. No, no, no. Grenada gold. Grenada. <laughs> yeah. We need to put on Grenada Gold more. I, I Slab Hunter has them in that series, and also the Itty Bit Slab Hunters has Grenada Gold too. So fantastic color, even in Oklahoma. Yes, they are. He has taught me a lesson over here in Oklahoma with those with those baits right there. Yeah, it's going to be a good sunny day tomorrow with no wind, 70 degrees. It'll be nothing but a hammer session. And it's funny, I got one guy in the morning. And I've been running double headers, groups, and everything on the worst days possible. But now the best day, I got one guy in the morning. We'll go catch 30 in a hurry, I bet you. Bucky, um, yeah, I'll answer that question real quick. He's asking, can you still fish without live scope? Absolutely. I've caught a lot of fish this year so far without live scope. So, yeah, I can catch them with live scope without. I'm, I'm game either way. Hey, just be like a uh, fellow I just took fishing the other day. He said, I'm not using live scope. I, it was me. So he was saying he was catching them without live scope. He was just listening to direction. <laughs> so technically, <laughs> he was catching it. He caught his limit with no live scope. <laughs> Dalco's got an Okatippi report. He said from last weekend, which is over Meridian, Mississippi, they would dive to the bottom, and then when they come back up, would smoke it. Oh, yeah. That's just like you said. When they come up off that bottom, they will be aggressive. Do you think some of the new sonar spooks fish? 
Sometimes. You know, I I know when I get near a, another boat, and I can tell automatically if they've got a, a live sonar, oh, yeah. live scope in their boat, just by the flashes across the screen. I really definitely believe catfish can, because they, they seem to get out of there pretty quick for me. I believe crappie are starting to pick up on it as well, and you think of some of these lakes that are highly pressured. These fish, I think, are starting to feel it and understand that it's not a good feeling, and uh, it's not a very wise choice to be around it for too long. So I think they can actually feel it somewhat. No scientists when it comes to that, though. Uh, yeah, Carlos said, the sonar doesn't spook them, but a 4,000-pound boat does. I hear you there. <laughs> yeah. It is hard. It is really hard. Like, sometimes I'm like, how do we think we're sneaking? I'll tell them, we're, let's sneak up to this guy. We ain't sneaking nothing. <laughs> Like you just said, a 4,000-pound boat coming through the water, they got to feel the displacement and just different feelings. That well, mine's about 5,000-pound boat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, Brett Phillips, he's watching from California. New to live scope, trying to figure this crappie thing out. Brett, make sure you're, you definitely subscribe on YouTube. We've got a lot of good stuff about that. Uh, we'll definitely be glad to help you that out there as well when it comes to figuring some things out traditional ways to catch them and also live stone on ways to catch them. Yeah. Zach Lawmaster said they hear the Jaws theme song when you're mm -hmm. coming up to them. Yeah, no joke. Okay. Yeah, Carlos, I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I'm getting up there, fellas, so stay oh, patient. He's, there. he's almost there, folks. He agrees with about the whole feel sorry for Dustin with the 13 foot pole. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you All right. Work. Got a good question from Adam from YouTube. He's saying, what do you do when the crappie follow your bait up almost to the boat and not bite? And when they do bite, it is very light and I'm casting to the fish. Ooh, I'd have to try to long rod them maybe if they were doing that. But um, if they're following it that far, you got to try to do something with your bait. I'm going to give my bait some type of different action than just reeling it straight back. When it's following it, I'm going to give it like a crazy little vibration. Sometimes I'll get that extra strike or just, it kind of sounds crazy, but when they're following it and they get up real close, stop it real fast. And sometimes it'll force them to suck it in real quick. Those are two things I would try. Sometimes it'll get a bite. I mean, it's taking it a little too far, but. <laughs> you know, Adam, another thing that I would try with that same token too is I would keep trying to change colors because there's something not exactly right for that fish not to commit. So it might be a color thing. And just like I was saying about this past Saturday, I, I had quite a few that follow up and some would even bite it. But as soon as I got the right color on there, it seemed to turn it on. Another thing to do whenever they're just nipping at it to say is downsize your baits. Go to a smaller profile bait using a hair jig or, or whatever. Cut that bait back some, trim some of that yeah. hair off, make that That's profile true. smaller. So whenever they do bite it, they have better of a chance to go ahead and get it in. The downside of smaller baits is usually they're going to bite or bite it lighter. So you're not going to feel that, you know, yes. these, these two and a quarter inch baits, whenever they strike those, a lot of times you're going to feel them. But if you're using a inch and a quarter or an inch itty bit, a lot of times you'll see the bite and you'll see your line jump. I mean, there's going to be something very minute because they're just sucking that bait in and turning or going up with it. So, but my suggestion would be keep changing colors and also downsize your profile and try throwing some scent on there that's another thing when they're following it that long you leave a little bit of a scent trail it gives them something them them thinking it's real and they will run up there and suck it in as well I got a uh, russell he's asking anybody got any good fish reports from pickwick any kind of information would appreciate it so anybody out there watching from pickwick area let's help russell out and get him some good today's bike fish report and Share the knowledge. <laughs> Sally Wacker, hand tied jig said, "Color matters when color matters." That's a pretty dang good uh, assumption there. That's a fact. Sometimes it's like a certain color will get that fish to bite this fall one as well. I don't. Did Bo ever answer where he caught those six yet? I don't know. He was fishing in no. thirty feet of water, suspended fifteen foot down on channel edges, so probably not Eagle Lake. No, yeah, he, he said it was Tennessee. Okay. Yep, yep, he said it was Tennessee. Joby, glad you jumped on here tonight, too. Mr. Bobby, 
Another good story from Mr. Bobby Mac McDonald. He's a client of mine. He's fished with me a lot. And uh, some of you guys might have heard the story before, but he, he called me last year. And not to call you out, Mr. Bobby, I love you. Um, but he called me last year the night before, and he said, man, this farmer's almanac is showing his four fishing today. And I, and I told Mr. Bobby, I was like, just throw that thing away. I'm on. We <laughs> own. Yeah. He's like, well, it shows poor. So, so he trusted me. He went ahead and went fishing anyway. Even though the old almanac said it was poor fishing day, we went fishing anyway. And we had 60 keepers before lunchtime. Ooh. And uh, But about every third fish, I asked Mr. Bobby what he thought about that farmer's almanac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a great great time i love it <laughs> i've had a couple of people saying that too uh you know barometric pressure and everything like that which if it does have effect on them we still got to be out there so <laughs> sometimes we have the best times when it's supposed to be bad see the hi what's up bro i see hummers actually appreciate him he's helping out with some of these fish reports too uh keep them going on youtube guys okay Got Josh. He says, "What y'all's technique for bobber jigging two jigs? Also, is a longer rod vertical to jigging the bed better than casting with a bobber and retrieving?" Thank you so much. You bet. Very That's a good question, question, Adam. Let me just nip this in the bud right here. Spawning fish with a slip cork or a bobber setup is about the funnest thing you can do with your clothes on. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Okay, that's what I would, if I had to cho choose to do anything crappie fishing, I'd have me a slip cork and a jig. I wouldn't run a double jig system, though. Um, I guess just due to the fact I, I do so well with one, and when you get hung up, you're losing two at a time. But uh, I would run a slip cork and one jig, and I would just run it six to eight inches, depending on water clarity, and throw it up there to the beds and just pop that jig or that cork back, let that bait go back down, cork back, bait go back down. And man, that's uh, that's as good as it gets, I'm telling you. But now, if you're wade fishing and you're out in like Grenada or Mississippi, they you have to walk out there around the beds and then dip with a longer pole. And I don't think those guys do much uh, slip corking because they're in so like waist deep of water, you know, uh, out there doing that. So when I go to Grand and I'm fishing the bank, I'm fishing in like 10 to 12 inches of water. I'm throwing all the way up next to the bank, and sometimes right when that bobber hits the water or you pop it a couple times it's dunking there and then you're in six eight inches of water i mean it's wild so big difference between mississippi and here i got um u.s crappie keeper asking a question about fishing off the pier by shaggies any suggestions about fishing that area uh i know there's a big tree right on the edge of that creek channel we're talking about and you know i would get a map and see if you can kind of figure out by that pier location you know how far to cast away from it but there's a creek channel and, and some brush that run pretty close to that pier so my best advice on that would be get you a uh, uh a lake map they sell them all over the place around town boat shops and all that kind of good things and then day in and day out i see a lot of fish about 11 foot for barnett pre-live scope you know 11 foot was always a great starting point so i would set it about 11 foot deep with a slip bobber and let them eat I got Jeffrey from YouTube, another great question. He says, when you guys are talking about creeks, do you mean creek channels? Sometimes it sounds like you're talking about coves off the main lake. Yeah. Great, great, great question. That is a really good question. So a lot of what I say coves off the main lake or coves off the channel is like a secondary creek channel. There's actually a channel that runs off of it. Um, but I fish both, definitely. But when I say creek channel, it is one that will run off of the main lake channel. And then what I'm kind of referring to are, are these reservoirs that before they were impounded and flooded, it were, was a more likely a river system that flowed through that general area before they flooded. And if you look at these maps, they have oxbows sitting off the top, off the side of the river channel, but a lot of times there's a river channel running through the whole entire lake. Yeah. But also, if you look at even a little bit deeper than that, you'll see these different creeks that used to feed into the river. And they'll highlight them on your Navionics, Lake Master, any kind of map car for the most part. 
it'll show these creeks that were flowing into that river channel pre it was flooded. So a lot of times when I'm talking about creeks, I'm actually talking about submerged creeks that were there before the lakes were actually flooded. Okay. Yeah. Charles Henderson said, here goes, <laughs> here he goes again with the pier thing. <laughs> No, I was wondering where Charles Henderson was today. I've been waiting on him. He said he's going to have a fishing report tomorrow, though, here earlier today, earlier in the show. So we'll see where he's, Absolutely. Going, where he's going. Looks like a good weather. Looks like a uh, knock on wood. Yeah. Uh, Looks like pretty good weather the rest of the week. Mr. Well, Jerry Hancock, Roman on Lake Fork about 10 to 1030, then moved into timber sink to the bottom about 12 to 1 o'clock today. <laughs> so, sounds challenging, too. There we go. I think I'm way behind you. I hear that. You're so far behind. It's actually... I am so far. Well, I'm trying to catch the YouTube side, too. So you can well, see, see, I think you take care of YouTube. I'll take care of Facebook. I mean, I've got my, my okay. books here. Okay. I, I don't think I've missed too many of them yet so far. Um, got Robert from YouTube. Thank you for everybody from YouTube hey, for giving us comments. All, yeah. Hey, first of all, I'm impressed with YouTube because there's been some great questions coming up. Man, they're hammering some great questions. Yeah, there's there. been some good questions. Okay. Oh, Cajun Cricket on 132nd. Oh. Blackhead been good on Old Hickory, Tennessee. Fish Kentucky Lake last Saturday. Fish were on the mud. Come off the bottom, take the jigs. Man. I'm telling you, a blackhead with Cajun cricket even got me more excited. It's it's a Cajun cricket kind of day. I'm telling you, it's time to start breaking the Cajun cricket out in that muddy water. It does. Yeah, uh, can you use three hooks with live scope? And that question there is, you definitely need to check with your state regulations when it comes to what you can and cannot use. I definitely can yeah. advise you what you can use in your area. Uh, three hooks, I would definitely check on that particular body water you're fishing and your state regulation if that would be legal or not. Let, me rephrase, no. Let me rephrase what Brad's trying to tell you. You can do whatever you want, but <laughs> there's a consequence if you do something wrong by the law. He's just trying to take care of you. But, yes, you can do yeah. three hooks on that last go. <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to give a shout out to the, the guys in the Mississippi Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. So far this year, I have seen Gabe Warren's two different times checking boats, checking my boat, checking my clients, and seen the biologist two different times checking the catch at Eagle Lake and also Ross Barnett. So appreciate all these guys for these Department of Wildlife trying to get out there and protect our resource. So special yeah. shout out for anybody in law enforcement for doing what y'all do for us as well. They're keeping their eyes on things, ain't they? Keith Spencer, he said, late, but I'm here. Hey, Northeast Mississippi. Keith, appreciate mm -hmm. you, buddy. Sid is asking, did I fish the bay lately? I've been doing well the last three weeks. Good to know, Sid. I appreciate that little tidbit. Uh, he's talking <laughs> about Tillachie Bay. That's where Dustin liked to fish when he yeah, comes to Yeah, that's where he's is that where he's talking about, Pal? Oh, man. Hey, listen, that is the spot when it's on fire. I've been trying to get Brad to go, but I think he went a little early. I think he I think he needs to go look now and he'd be putting the wood. But that table you put today, Brad, that's a hard one to beat. I never saw that. <laughs> yeah. in Bay. So I'll tell you, he ain't Brad ain't fishing Palahatchee Bay. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Palahatchee Bay about three weeks ago and I fished right in the mouth of it uh, yeah. and under the bridge on both sides of the creek. And I seen what? a ton of shad uh, and I got yeah. out of there. I bet you you go there now. It's probably a different story. Travis yeah. Good says the morel mushrooms are starting to pop. Hey, Travis, I'll take you on a heck of a fishing trip if you fill me a Walmart sack full of morel mushrooms. <laughs> I've never had those. Oh, my gosh. Ever. Are you serious? No. Man, no. hey, I've got – morel mushrooms are right there. I mean, it is – I've perfect. heard that. Dude. I've heard it. I've heard it. I have never, never had, had. How can you be a crappie fisherman and never ate morel mushrooms? I just eat crappie. I guess it's fair enough. <laughs> it's as good as crappie, I'll promise you. It's I've heard good. that, but I've yeah. never experienced it for myself, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Mr. John Lee, he said, caught some males holding on stumps at Grenada in six to nine foot of water. My guess that they were fanning eggs from early spawners. What do you think? 
Uh, I think that you're right. I think that's a good assumption for sure. Uh, Jeff Fish in the grass. Jake, are two weeks. Mark my words. In two weeks, mm. you're going to be smoking them in that grass. <laughs> it's close. It's getting there. Two weeks of warm weather. And you're there. I got Anthony. He's asking, what would be a favorite color if you were fishing for the night bite? Let's Ooh, see. Mm. Let's see. I got a goodie bag. I'm thinking black and hot pink is one of my favorites. Black, hot pink. That's a really good nighttime bait. Yep. Dark colors, great as well. Another color. Uh, and this is Moglo. Oh, Moglo. Is that the outlaw? That is the outlaw. And that's a lime chartreuse color. Yeah. Glows like a, you hit it with a light for a second, toss it out there, and it's going to yeah. shine like a, the North Star. Yeah. At the Ooh, nighttime <laughs> would be a great color combination for the night. But that's the, that's the, Baby Shad Swimmer in the Moglo Outlaw color. You know, I've used them around piers at nighttime. Definitely uh, going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, Ryan Parsley said, you got to be kidding me, Brad. You've never had fresh crappie and fresh fried morels. You're missing next to never. heaven. Never. <laughs> never. Hey, Stephen Sullivan said, black and gold at night work well. That's a, that, oh. I can see that working really good. Yep. Yellow at Davis nighttime. He's headed to Eagle Lake tomorrow. Hope I have better luck than I've been having on Lake Washington. You're still so far down there. It's something else. I, let me, I'm gonna read, you, you stay in touch with uh, okay, yeah, yeah, Facebook, yeah, okay. and I'm going to just catch up with the YouTube. How about that? Okay, fair enough. I got you, buddy. I'll take care of you. Uh, Colby Warren asked, have you ever long-lined at night? I have not. That would be cool. <laughs> I have, have been very tempted to do that at night. Right. I think it would be really fun. I bet you're right. You know they're really feeding hard at night, way up shallow. They may, they may, that yeah. may be the ticket. Pull a single thirty second right above, uh, right about water level. Yeah, you know, foot to two foot low. I think you know what. Be. You know what I noticed. This is crazy too. Um, before dark, um, all these places I'm catching my own fish, they fill up with shad. You you can't see anything. They'll just fill completely up with shad right before dark. It's like the shad just come out of nowhere and they'll fill it up. How much longer before they deep uh, move into deep water, Brad? Tony Tony Van Norman asked you that. Until they move into the deep water? Yeah. They're in the deep water. There you go. <laughs> they're in the deep water. So there you go. They they're still out there, I guess. Um big bait or small bait big bait or small bait tomorrow on Kentucky Lake after this cold front. Josh, start out with a big bait. If they nose up and start nosing back down, don't like it, then I'd switch to small. March is one of my favorite months to use a larger size profile. Um, you know, I've been using a lot of the slab hunters and uh, tadpoles uh, or live roamers this week. Both have been doing really well for me. I like using the slab hunters because it seems whenever you get a bite on one of these bigger profiles, they just about break your wrist. Yeah. Um, I want to say a special shout out for Mr. Bobby, his brother Jimmy not doing very well. So we're going to say a few prayers for him tonight. So uh, definitely think of you uh, and your family, Mr. Bobby, for Mr. Jimmy. Sorry to hear that, Bobby. Mm -hmm. um, Hudson, my brother, he asked me what my favorite way to fish for spawning crappie is. Hey, I just covered that earlier uh, on this bad boy, but throwing a slip cork on the bank for sure is my favorite way to catch them. Just casting the cork out there and smoking them favorite way to, with clients you can line them up down the side of the boat and just drag through the banks and it is fun and i've i've caught my fastest limits doing that i've had four people at the same time four or five people at the same time real and crappie in at the same time it's a rush when it's on, that's, on that's right. like a house burning down and oh man it is <laughs> it is i got a you question from james he says what color head with mud dauber or pecan cream for me and you Ooh. I know mine already, so I'll spit it out. You know, I love orange heads. I uh, love chartreuse heads, but orange and chartreuse, just what I would go with. Yeah. Uh, for the pecan cream, I'm doing probably like a pink, pink. Yeah, uh, pink head. I'm going to do a pink head for pecan not cream. Me. And then that mud dauber, I'm using a white. I'm using a white with the mud dauber. I've been doing good at Grand Lake right now with a white head for all my Grand Lakens. 
<laughs> All right, I'm looking at uh, John Lee said, "Pull on a pull on a full moon, and he bet it would work good. I, I bet, bet it would. Too. You can see your rods a lot easier too, not having to use lights. Yeah, for sure. I got Floyd's asking any advice for someone learning to fish deep water reservoirs. I'm originally from Southwest Missouri. Used to fish in shallow water five to ten, like real foot. Now live in." southwest missouri now i guess those waters are deeper so dustin fishes a lot more deeper than i do day in and day out so any advice for somebody trying to fish deep water reservoirs man i mean just i guess do the same thing you would in the shallow just look a lot deeper but they're doing the same thing um yeah just don't be scared of the number either if it says 50 foot there still will be fish in that 50 foot of water setting eight to 15 foot deep sometimes just doing what we're talking about roaming right now and you can go into Grand Lake right now in Duck Creek. There's 70 foot of water. You can throw your troll motor down and catch great fish five to eight foot deep in 70, 75 foot of water. So That's just crazy. still look in that deep water for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I don't fish a lot of deep water, thank God. <laughs> now, yeah, I've also, you just heard somebody on here. He's catching them 25 to 30 foot deep off the bottom. I've caught them 65 foot deep at Grand Lake, so and i've whacked them that deep before in big schools on the bottom 65 foot deep so just you have to have a big open mind and catching them deep but it's it's fun to do that when you catch them though they're going to be dead when you get them to the top when they're that deep or Bubble, Bubble vance says purple mist on ross barnett Ooh. is dynamite at night time purple mist would be great at night and purple mist That'd would be, be good right too. now uh marty perry he said his video won't play it plays on youtube but don't know how to comment Marty, you can comment on this Facebook, and I'll take care of you, buddy. I'm better than Brad at it anyway. Don't worry about well, it. I've been juggling, too. You just hey, had to use You've been, you been doing man. good, Brad. I'm telling now, you, I'm proud. I like this setup. I'm on the YouTube comments. You're on the Facebook. It's doing I'm great. Proud. I'm proud. I don't know why it just took us about 70 shows to realize that. I mean, <laughs> that is kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, it just took about 70 uh, shows. Yeah. Uh, Tony was asking on Eagle Lake, when are they moving it back out deep? That's what he was asking. I got you. You know, uh, Tony, I, I, I've caught them shallow all the way through mid-April on Eagle Lake, but there's going to still be some in that mid-depth range, and I'm talking 8 to about 14 foot of water. Even right now, today, I guarantee you there's fish from 8 to 12 foot of water on Eagle Lake. Um, now, when you get back to that 20-plus, it's probably going to be later on in the summertime, but uh, if I was going to look for deeper water for, like, long line and to say – I would concentrate in that eight to twelve foot water. Yeah, now you got to take Facebook over because my dang uh, internet just went out on me. So what? Yeah, I was doing so good too, keeping you caught up. I, I know I, that was working. I mean, that's everybody. Not... <laughs> yeah, which I think it was. It was slowing down. I think they were close to eight o'clock, so they were snipping on me. <laughs> everybody know. Yeah, I'm telling you, they do. It was cracking me up. Ronnie, he says, one week last week in northwest Georgia, we slayed them up shallow Thursday. One foot of water was 65 degrees. Rain Friday, yeah. water was 58. I only caught 12 fish Saturday May, uh, uh, in the a.m. Yeah, I, they were probably just pulled out a little bit deeper. Yeah, right now they're definitely pulling in and out, in and out. The warmer they, it gets, the more they're pulling in. And then when they get any cold front, they pull back out. Oh, i got to ask questions. Is when is the conditions good for Mo Glow colored baits? And also, I'm going to give you a quick tip before we keep on with questions. But if you purchase anything off Lure Net, as far as Bobby Garland baits, Crappie Pro Jig Heads, use the discount code Crappie Connection 15 and it will get you 15% off all your orders on the Bobby Garland baits, Crappie Pro baits, maybe even other stuff. I'm not sure, but I know it'll work for the Bobby Garland and Crappie Pro stuff. We'll get you 15% off by the discount code Crappie Connection 15. Lure net. Voila. All right, about the Moglo colors. You know, um, for me, I've used a lot of the Moglos in muddier water. Uh, fresh, muddy water. I like using like this outlaw color which is a lime chartreuse color um even pink phantom back in the day i liked it a lot believe it or not i, I used to use a lot of the yeah, pink phantom in muddy water. yeah 
I feel like the mogul gives off like a different fluorescent yeah. shine to it almost. So it's definitely a time and place. I like it in muddy water as well. Maybe I answered that question. And at nighttime. Eric, appreciate you joining in. Billy, he said he's better late than ever. I agree, Mr. Billy. <laughs> but, you know, guess what? You can go back and watch the whole thing over again and comment, yeah. and we'll try to strike you up later. This has been a great show. Been fun as always. Make sure we got a new podcast great. dropping tomorrow, 5 o'clock, Long Line and Jigs. We had Torch Tandle, which is a great long liner. And uh, be out tomorrow. Make sure yeah. you hit that subscribe button, follow, <laughs> thumbs up, turn your notifications on. Help us get to that 50K. If you have not hit the 50K. follow button on YouTube, make sure you do that. We're 750 folks away. So it's that close. We're that itty close. bit away. One little itty bit away from 50,000 followers. <laughs> flat and that's all thank you from you guys. Flat player itty bit. Hit the thumbs up if you haven't done it. Until next week, we will see you on today's bite. Holla. Appreciate you guys. Uh, next Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Today's bike. Dustache out. Appreciate it, buddy.